Good morning, children. Good morning, everyone watching. Welcome to another week of children's online service. I hope you're all great. I hope you're all well and you've had a good week. So we've now come together once more to learn more about Jesus and to grow in our faith. So now, please all join me for a time of praise and worship. Let's stand up, prepare our hearts and worship our God. by now they fall but you have never failed me yet waiting for change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Ooh, yeah. I know the night won't last your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Yes it will oh, oh, oh. Jesus is still enough Keep me within your love My heart will sing your praise again promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your Thank you all for taking part during that praise and worship. Please join me as we open in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for gathering and bringing us all here for another week, whether that be at home or within the church. Thank you for seeing us through our week. 
keeping us safe, protecting us, guiding us, pouring out your love as you do. We thank you, Father. We pray that as we are gathered here to learn, to grow, to love you more, to, to receive from you and, and, and to, for you to speak to our hearts, Father. We pray that there will be no distractions right now that we will remain focused on you, remain focused on your word and everything that you have in store for us during this lesson. We thank you for your love. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for our families, our friends, our teachers and all the people and things that you've put in our lives. We thank you, Father, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. It's offering time. Now it's time for this week's new lesson. God's story. Jesus loves everyone. So part of God's story is about the people Jesus loves. And it goes like this. When God created the world, it was perfect. There was no fear or sickness or death. And people got to be close with God. But then people messed it up. They disobeyed God. And because of that, they felt loneliness and pain. They needed a rescuer to make things right. So God sent his only son, Jesus, to come to the world and show us what God is like. And a lot of people thought Jesus came for the most powerful and important. People who seem like they're perfect, even though no one is perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. The thing is, Jesus didn't only come to save the most important and powerful people. He came here for the people that others don't like or respect or pay attention to. Jesus healed people with skin diseases just by touching them, even when no one else wanted to. Jesus had dinner with tax collectors, even though religious leaders thought they were sinners. Jesus said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. One day, when Jesus was hanging out with his disciples, some people brought their kids to see Jesus. The disciples tried to make the kids go away. They didn't think Jesus would want to be bothered by them. But instead, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. The disciples couldn't believe it. Jesus actually wanted the kids around him and even said that we should trust in God the way kids do. Another time, some rich people gave lots of money to the temple in a big, flashy way, while a poor widow who had almost nothing gave everything she had, just two small coins. Jesus saw this and said, that poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these other people gave a lot because they are rich, but even though she is poor, she put in everything. Jesus didn't care who had lots of money, who had lots of friends, how young or old or sick someone was. He came here for people like the widow, the tax collector, and the little children. You see, Jesus' kingdom is for everyone. While others rejected the sick, Jesus got close to them. When others looked down on sinners, Jesus spent time with them. When others thought they were better than the poor, Jesus valued them. And no matter how old we get, or how much we learn, or how important we are, we don't need to do anything special for God to love us. We are all imperfect. We all sin and disobey God, and we can never do enough things to deserve His love. God loves us freely. And because we can trust and depend on God, we can treat others the way Jesus did. So if you've ever felt invisible, unnoticed, or unwanted, Jesus loves you. If you feel like you don't fit in or that you're not good enough, Jesus loves you. If you've ever worried that you've done too many bad things or that you aren't as good as other people, Jesus loves you. You are the kind of person who Jesus wants to spend time with. 
and he loves you exactly the way you are. And that's a little bit about how Jesus loves everyone. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. People needed a rescuer. Jesus came to the world. He cared about everyone. 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 Jesus' kingdom is for all of us, and that includes you. And that's a part of God's story. Great stuff. I hope you enjoyed that lesson and you were able to learn more about Jesus' love and Father's love and how it extends to everyone and not just those who go to church or a select few. We know from this lesson that Jesus came to the world to rescue us all and to save us all, depending on if you obviously choose him. We know that he cared and loves everyone, even those that society looks down on, society casts aside, and those who aren't very liked, Jesus came to die for them and loves them too. Jesus' Jesus's kingdom is for everybody. That extends to us, that same love that Jesus shows to everyone we too must show to people around us those who we may not get along with and those who are a bit difficult to love we must extend that love to everyone love those who are looked down upon love those who are cast aside remember that Jesus's kingdom is for everyone and we must love all of his people, all of his children, for he first loved us. So now it's time for this week's new memory verse and it's taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and it reads be kind and loving to each other forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ so this is our memory verse because we must apply the truth that we know that Jesus loves everyone and we must apply that in our own lives by extending that love to everyone also. Can you think of examples of how you can be kind? You can be kind by including, involving those who may be feeling left out, asking someone to play or sit with you at lunch, speaking to someone who feels left out, you can be loving by showing you care when someone is upset or down, for example. And forgiving. If someone's hurt you, offended you or wronged you, letting go of the hurt, the anger that you might have towards them. If there's anyone that you haven't forgiven and you're choosing not to forgive, take some time to ask God to help you forgive that person and as the scripture read it says we should be kind and loving if we need God's help it's available we can ask God to help us in these areas and he will help us <laughs> So now it's time for our special clip. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm Dave and I want to talk about the love of God, but I'm thinking I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about the love of God for the whole family. So go ahead, grab your kids. It's going to be a, a long week and let's start it off right talking about God's love. So do you think we can measure the love of God? I actually brought a few things with me to try to help us out with that. Um, I brought this, you know what this is? This is a measuring cup. You use this for baking, maybe making cookies. You measure your flour out. You measure out your sugar. You measure just the right amount of Brussels sprouts in your cookies. 
Oh, do you guys not put Brussels sprouts in your cookies? Oh, okay. Maybe like 10 cups of chocolate chips. That's the way I make my cookies. So do, what do you think? Do you think we could use a measuring cup to measure God's love? Well, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes my cup overflow. So do you think this cup is big enough to measure God's love? I think not. All right, so let's move on. Let's go to a different thing. How about a tape measure? Tape measure you use for building and you can measure stuff. And what do you think? Do you think we could take this tape measure and measure how high God's love is? Well, the Bible says, that God's love is higher than the heavens. So I'm thinking, I don't know, this thing's maybe 25 feet. I don't think it's gonna reach. No, it's not gonna reach. So, all right, last thing. Let's take a look at this one. You know what this is. This is a watch. And you can use a watch to measure time. And, and that's a really valuable thing. And your parents probably use their watches in church to measure how long the pastor preaches for. They shouldn't do that. That's not nice to do. Don't, you tell them, don't look at your watch. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think we can use the watch to measure how long God's going to love us? Well, the Bible says that God's going to love us forever and ever and ever. So I'm thinking that we're going to run out of battery before that comes, right? I think there's only one thing I've ever found that can measure God's love. Do you know what that is? It's the cross. <laughs> when you look at the cross, you can see how much God loves you. So the next time somebody says to you, well, how much does God love you anyway? You point at the cross and you say, he loves me that much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope he was able to demonstrate and remind you that God's love is unmeasurable and that the only way that you can try or attempt to measure God's love is through the cross. The cross represents the sacrifice that Jesus made out of his love for us. And that is how we can try and picture the love of God through that sacrifice the, the torture the shame all for us and all to save us so now it's time for us to share the grace may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So now it's time for our 2021 confession and it reads, I trust God for a year of unusual elevation. I will humble myself daily and stay radically committed to God's word, God's will and God's ways, no matter what. As a result, I will shine brighter and brighter and reflect God's glory every day and in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the end of the service. See you next Sunday.